Good morning, everyone. I hope this finds you all well this morning. Today, I'm going to be reading from 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 2. Uh, and then I'll just share whatever the Lord uh, gives me to share. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 2, and this is in the ESV. Now, I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you were being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. Now, this packs a punch. <laughs> There's a lot in this little bit of scripture here. Okay, so this is Paul speaking. He's talking to the Christians because he says brothers and brothers was a general term meaning brethren, brothers and sisters, everybody who who has genuine faith in Jesus Christ. Okay, so he's speaking to the church. <laughs> um, he's reminding them of the gospel that he preached to them. Okay, so what was the the, the gospel that Paul preached? It's the same as what Jesus preached, you know. We must die with Christ the Son and live to him and to his righteousness. That's why Jesus died. When we believe in Jesus with genuine faith, we are crucified with Christ and death with, to sin. And we are raised with him to walk in newness of life in him, not like our old lives, but uh, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Um, and, and that we are to walk according to the Spirit now and not according to the flesh and not in sin. For if sin is what we practice, and if we walk in sin and not in obedience to our Lord and not in righteousness and holiness, then we do not have eternal life with God. You know, if we say we're in fellowship with God, but we're still walking in darkness, we lie. If we say we know God, but we do not obey his commands, we lie. That is in 1 John 1 and 1 John 2 and 1 John 3. And I realize that's not Paul, you know, but that's John, you know, the Apostle John. And, uh, you know, he said that if we continue in sin, if sin is what we practice, you know, then not only do we not know God, but we're of the devil. You know, we're not of God. We're not born of God. You know, we have, we have no part with God, you know. So the gospel is not just believing in Jesus and getting your sins forgiven so that when you die, you can go to heaven. You know, the gospel is that Jesus died, that we might die with him to sin and live to him and to his righteousness. Jesus said, if anyone would come after me, he must deny self, take up his cross daily, that's daily die to sin and to self, and follow, obey him. For he you know, and I'm going to paraphrase this part. For if we hold on to our old lives of living in sin and or for self, we're going to lose them for eternity. But if for the sake of Jesus, we die with him to sin, we lose our lives, you know, um, and, and, and then we walk according to the spirit and not according to the flesh and obedience to our Lord, then we have the hope of eternal life with God. Uh, and that's in, for, um, <laughs> I am old and, and things go in and out of my head. Um, and, and I know that like backwards and forward. Oh, Luke 9, 23 to 26. That you can read uh, how, how it's worded there. Um, but basically, the gospel is that we have to die with Christ to sin. We have to live to him and to his righteousness. We have to obey him. We cannot walk in sin. We cannot live in sin. For if we live in sin, we're going to die and go to hell. We are not going to go to heaven. We are not going to inherit eternal life with God. That is the whole gospel in a nutshell. And in uh, Luke 9, 23 to 26, it covers that, that whole thing. And I didn't cover verse 26, where he says, if we're ashamed of him, you know, while we're on the earth, he's going to be ashamed of us when he returns, which means... We're not going to go to be with him. So we need, we need to, to know that. And I I will put the scriptures, if I remember, in that section underneath the video. And you can look them up for yourself. But read the scriptures yourself. But read them in context. Because 
Wrong teachings are taught from scriptures taught outside their context. Okay. So that's the, that's the essence of the gospel that Jesus taught and the apostles taught. Uh, it says, I'm reminding you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received. Okay. So they received it at least uh, in uh, Spirit, they received it spiritually, or some of them may just have received it intellectually. But then listen to what it says. In which you stand, and standing has to do with, that means we're, we're doing those things. You know, we're standing on those things. You know, we're, we're holding on to that. You know, we, we are following Jesus in obedience. We, we, are, we are living holy and godly lives. We're not living in sin. Doesn't mean we're perfect. Doesn't mean we never sin. But sin is not our practice. Righteousness and holiness is our practice. We are following the Lord. You know, we are not living in deliberate and habitual sin. If you live in deliberate and habitual sin and not in righteousness and holiness, then you don't know God. Even if you think you do, you don't. That's what the scriptures teach. Okay. So we have to stand on that, you know. It says, and by which you are being saved. Okay, this is another thing. We don't just get saved and that's it. And then we're good until we go to heaven. You know, that's not what the Bible teaches. It teaches we are saved past. We are being saved present. We will be saved future when Jesus Christ returns and he takes those of us who are walking in obedience to him to be with him for eternity, which is when our salvation will be completed. And not until then. So we don't just get saved. You know, you don't profess Jesus one time in your life and then you're good to go. That's not what the scriptures teach. That's what men teach. That's what women teach. That's what the flesh teaches. Okay. And I know I'm rocking some boats here, but read the scriptures and read them in context. And you will see that what I'm saying is what the scriptures teach. Okay. By which you are being saved, if, okay, this is another thing. Our salvation is conditional on us doing the things that God said that we have to do. Now, a lot of people today are teaching there's no conditions. You don't have to repent. You don't have to obey. You don't have to do any works, you know, but they forget Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 is followed by verse 10, which says, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared in advance that we should walk in them, that we should do them, that we should obey them. And there's plenty of scriptures telling us that works are required of us. It's just, they're not our own fleshy works. They are the works of God, which he prepared for us and that he empowers us to do, okay? So um, just know there's a whole lot of if verses in the Bible. There's a whole lot of verses. Uh, and so many people read the promises, but they leave out the qualifications. Like, uh, like in John 10, they read 28 to 30, and then they apply it broadly to anybody who professes faith in Jesus Christ. But verse 27 says, my sheep listen to me. They pay attention to me. <clears throat> I know them. And they follow me. That means we obey him. We do what he says. We're paying attention to him. We're listening. We're heeding what he says. We're following him wherever he leads us in obedience to his commands. We have eternal life. No, nothing can snatch the, uh, uh, us out of the Lord's hands. If we are his sheep, if we are listening to him and we are following him in obedience... This does not get applied to everybody who says, Lord, Lord, okay? Because Jesus said, not everybody who says to me, Lord, Lord, is going to enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one doing the will of God the Father in heaven. And that's in Matthew 7, 21 to 23. Okay, so just know that for every promise of God, there is an if. It might not use that exact word, but there is a, a condition. There is a stipulation if you do this, providing that you do this, then this is, is going to happen. If we walk in fellowship with him, if we obey him, if we walk in righteousness and holiness, then we have eternal life with God. 
Please pay attention to those things. So, <clears throat> so we are being saved if we hold fast to the word that should have been preached to us. You know, not everybody is hearing the truth because the lies are just uh, so big. But if you were, were taught and, and you're, you're being taught right now what the true gospel is, if you, hold, if you believe that and you follow that, and then you hold fast to that, meaning that you continue in that and, and you continue to obey, you continue to walk in fellowship, you continue to walk in obedience, and you keep resisting the devil and fleeing from temptation to sin, and you do not walk in sin, uh, <clears throat> then you are being saved. If you do that, and then the other scriptures talk about, and you have to do that to the end, step fast to the end, or you're not saved. You know, you can't just quit at some point in time and say, well, I, I made a profession of faith in Jesus Christ. No, it doesn't work that way. So it says, in which you stand and by which you are being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preach to you, unless you believed in vain. Okay, so it's possible to believe in vain, which is not God-given faith, but that's human faith, uh, because it is rendered then ineffective, hopeless, unsuccessful, unproductive, useless, abortive, worthless. So if your faith is, I got saved, and so now I'm going to go to heaven when I die, that is useless, you know, because it's not biblical, okay? So just know that we have to die with Christ to sin. We have to walk in obedience to him. We have to do what he says. We have to follow him. But if we walk in sin, all, all, that, all that's off. Okay, that's the encouragement for today.